placing and finishing concrete. In this section, we will go through a pre-pour checklist and outline the important steps in pouring the concrete. Here are the main elements we will illustrate. Pre-pour checklist, repairing a damaged form, personnel, pour rates, slump, vibration, cleanup, and final wall alignment. It is strongly advised that you accept help from Plastifab staff or experienced ICF installers if this is your first ICF concrete pour. Before you begin the pour, take a few minutes to run through our checklist. Be sure that the blocks on the first course are set on the chalk lines. All T-corners and T-back bracing is in place. All rail ribbon is in place together with string lines attached ready for wall alignment. You have extra pieces of plywood and bracing material at hand ready to deal with the unexpected. You have a 1 inch to 1 and a half inch vibrator. The concrete pump operator has a double 90 degree elbow for the discharge end of the pump. The specified strength, aggregate size and slump as well as the quantity of concrete have been ordered. The tabs on the blocks of the top course have been protected if you intend to add a second floor. You have sufficient help on hand to place align, finish, and clean up after the pour. You have an auto level or laser level if you intend to level the top of the wall. You have anchor bolts on site if required. The beam pockets are in place. Damaged forms can be repaired with plywood or 1x4s screwed to the webbing on either side of the damaged portion. The optimum crew size while placing and finishing the wall is five people. One placer, two on the vibrator, one on the outside to check pour height and watch for incidences, and one inside to do likewise. When the final lift is in progress, the last two crew members can start the aligning process. When the pour is complete, the placer and vibrator people are free to level the top of the wall and to place any anchor bolts. The rate of pour should not exceed that recommended for the site conditions by the American Concrete Institute. The ideal concrete slump is between four and six inches. A four-foot to five-foot wall can be filled and vibrated in one pass with only a little topping up. An eight-foot or six-course wall should be filled in two passes, first a four-foot lift followed by vibration, then filled to grade and vibrated again. It is advisable to fill walls higher than nine-foot in lifts not exceeding four feet. Be sure to vibrate one foot into any previous pass before conducting any subsequent pass. It is essential to vibrate the concrete to eliminate air bubbles that may become trapped in the forms. Not vibrating can severely compromise the strength of the walls. When vibrating the concrete, start one web space away from a corner, then vibrate every 16 inches or two spaces from there on, avoiding as best as possible the vertical joints of the forms. Avoiding the vertical joints of the forms helps prevent bulging or flaring, especially the bottom row at these locations. Vibrate as closely as possible to any rough opening bucks to ensure the reinforcements around the openings become well covered with concrete. The same is true for areas around any structural or mechanical sleeves or box outs. The concrete at the bottom of rough opening bucks should be finished level with the bottom of the horizontal 2x4s at this time. Make sure you vibrate into the previous lift a maximum depth of one foot. Place the vibrator quickly into the concrete and remove it slowly at a rate of one foot per second. Try to remain four feet to five feet behind the concrete placer. Any spilled concrete should be cleaned off the footings inside and outside of the wall. After the concrete has been poured, leveled, and the anchor bolts placed, check that all the corners, tees, and freestanding ends are plumb adjust the walls to the string lines, and once the final adjustments have been completed, get off the scaffold and walk around the excavation, sighting the walls to confirm that they are straight.